Hey, how's it going? Just gonna do a oil change in my uh, 2007 Toyota Highlander, and I thought I'd uh, let you come along and watch how I do it. It's gonna be more of a deluxe change. That means I'm gonna cover a few extra things. So I'll show you what I'm up to. So here's a little tip for you. I got myself a little bag, and I store my tools in it. I uh, put my oil filter in there. Uh, another thing I like to do is uh, I'll tape the O-ring on the top. And I was just thinking I should write the torque on here, um, but I happen to know it's about 30 to 33 around that. Um, so anyway, so I don't really need that, but that's a good idea. I have my socket ready to go with an extension, a screwdriver, and that's to get the old uh, ring off. Sometimes they stick on there. What else I got in here? Oh, most important part. Well, not. This is my oil filter wrench. I just got one for the Toyota. It is, I noticed the one that if you get one that actually says Toyota on it, it fits a little better. It's called a 14 flutes. I think that's those flat spots. There's probably 14 of them. And I thought it was 65 millimeters, but I'm probably wrong. But uh, you just want to make sure it fits on there really good. And I don't know what it is about the Toyotas. Maybe their metric is a little bit different, but it fits in there really nice, and I like that. So with that, you can take your bag and go up to the front of the car there. So one thing I got there is, uh, I just use this Walmart Full Synthetic Super Tech. I'm um, using 020, and uh, it seems like it's cheaper than it used to be. It's about 13 and some change, so I'll just say $14 for 5 quarts. So what I'll do is I'll buy a 5 quart, and I'll drain off a quart. And I keep doing that every time, and then one of these, after the fourth or fifth one, you get a free oil change out of the deal. And I, it's actually more expensive if you buy the individual four quarts than to do it this way. So a lot of times when I'm doing an oil change, I'll just do the oil change, which is something you really should you should do more than that. Um, so a couple of things is you just want to check your battery, make sure your battery terminals aren't corroded. They look all clean. If they're corroded, of course, take care of that. Uh, next thing I want to do is take the oil, check the oil air filter. And uh, sorry about the wind there. Hold on. We normally don't get wind here, uh, but my understanding is the next couple of days are going to get really hot, so there's probably a big uh, altitude weather shift or something caught it in a jet stream or something. Anyway, so I'm just going to grab the little flipper thing, pop that off. There's one on the other side. Might as well show you this one. I've done these before, so it's been a while on this one, but so hopefully this will show up on camera. There's like some hinges on there, so you just want to be uh, aware of that. And so basically, I'm just going to bend it back and get it up to where I can get the filter out. So the filters, I mean it's dirty, I probably I should get a new one. So I'll just bang this clean for now and then go to the parts store and pick up one. I like the Wix filters a lot, so I'll just get one of those. Um, so this would be fine to drive, it's not like overly plugged, but it is dirty. Right time for a new one. Uh, if you want to skimp, if you clean this out really good with a, a vacuum, it'd probably make it for a while but hopefully it's not too expensive so I'm just gonna put this back on there things you just want to watch for is put the hinges on uh, they do have an upside and a downside and I think it says up there so I'm assuming that's the upside um, anyways I'm just gonna place it back in
hopefully that was on camera there. So what I like to do is I put the hinge part in first, then bring it down and then flip the two clips on. And then that's it for the air filter. Another thing you want to do is check your, uh, your fluid level. The, um, you just, there's just a gauge there on the side. It has a min and a max on it. Not rocket science there. You just want to make sure it's in between those. If you need a little bit, I would just get... Um, nowadays you could go with the universal um, five five year fluids are pretty good uh, if you get the Toyota one it's like seven years or something like that and then you could get a generic Toyota nowadays they make the fluids a lot better than they used to so I feel comfortable using the generic stuff if you buy a jug of the correct stuff which I do have in the back in the shed it'll last a long time unless you got a leak which I don't have a leak so I just top it off every now and then. Other things you could look at is back there. Just take a peek. Just check your power steering fluid. My brake fluid's looking really clean. It's back there. Power steering fluid looks kind of dirty, but it's hard. But it's uh, it's up there, so something to keep an eye on. And see here, get this going. Oops, sorry. So now what I like to do is I'm gonna um, check the oil. Can't tilt that for there's a little stick there I'm just gonna get a cloth and what I like to see is how much oil I've been burning if any so the car's been sitting for a while pull it out I just check for the general color of it it's really clean looking which is good and this is what you want to see whoops was it on there it's in between the marks there, which is perfect. You, as long as it's between those two marks, you're good to go. Um, the oil actually looks very good. It's got about 3,000 miles on it, so it looks that's really good for that oil. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So half a quart on 3,000 miles, that's that's really good. Um, so next we're going to get on to actually doing the oil change. One thing I do is open up the top here. And then I'll put that there and maybe stick a rag. So I'll see that easier and know that, I, that that's loose. But I do that so that when the oil drains, it'll come out easier. There's two schools of thought on oil draining. Personally, I like to do the oil cold. Um, you don't burn yourself. And the weight of all the material actually, in my opinion, goes to the bottom. And you want it to come out with the first initial flush. Uh, some people do it hot. When it's hot, you're going to burn yourself easier. You might not burn yourself, but it's not comfortable. And then um, the theory is as the oil comes out quicker and uh, maybe flushes that particle stuff out. Uh, I think both will work. Um, I kinda, I'm kind of partial towards doing it cold. You leave, do it in the morning. All that sediment's on the bottom of the oil pan. And, uh, and you won't burn yourself. And you just take your time you don't have to worry about it dripping plus it makes it a lot easier when you take the oil filter out so is this enough rambling on that let me uh, press on there hold on that's yeah, something I forgot to show you on the Toyota's and Honda's especially the Honda's they're really good about putting the type of oil on your uh, cap there in this case I can use a 520 or a 020 so I like to use the 020 the first number that's how hard it is to the engine start at when it's a uh, freezing out and so the smaller the number the first number the easier it is to turn over when it's uh, really cold when it's at operating temperature um, it's going to run with a 20 20 viscosity I guess you would say um, that's just a chart so uh, that means it's low friction at high temperature and you always want that front number to be the lower anyways a lot of people think by using a big front number that's stopping oil leaks. All that's doing is uh, making the engine hard, work harder when it's uh, cold out. When I say cold, 30 degrees, 32 degrees. All right, so uh, let's see. Get my bag here. And I guess I'll do the drain it first. So I need my 10 millimeter, my screwdriver, and I use this wrench here. This is my favorite wrench. There. It's nice and long and I'm just gonna take the oil drain plug out oh um, clean off the surface to your oil you don't want to get any water on her it. so hot out here right now that 
water trap rigging. So I break this open so it's not a tight seal. I'm going to take this off. And in my case, I got a little spot for it. And then I'll, I can throw my plug over on that side. So it just goes under there. And actually, I don't believe I need the extension right away. I use that for getting the oil filter out. So if we go down here, all I'm going to do is in the back there, there's just an oil, uh, oil drain plug with a washer on it. You just take that off and the oil's going to drain out and you just drain it in your bucket. It's not rocket science. You just don't want to lose your the bolt. So I'll probably take, um, I don't need the extension. And I'll get right back with my wrench. Hold on. Okay, so here's my wrench set up. The reason why I like this wrench so long, so much is it's long. So it's easy to get leverage and I can just uh, bend the end like that. And so, it's kind of tricky doing one hand and holding the camera. So it just goes on there. Before I did it, I make sure it's turning to the left so I don't even have to think about it. There it's loose. And this is where I'm talking about it. It's nicer to have the oil cold. Whoops. I almost didn't put it in the boil. So there we go. And I'll set this on the outside so I don't have to go fishing around. You just don't want to fall in the hole down there. Some of them, I don't know if it fit down there, but I don't want to find out. So, just going to let that drain. See, I got the oil on my hand. I didn't burn myself because it's cool. Um, anyway, and it's coming out plenty fast for me. So let me finish this up, and I'll get a rag, wipe my hand off, and I'll be right back. Okay, while I was waiting, whoop, shoot. While I was waiting, I put the crush rusher on the drain plug and cleaned it off. In this case, it didn't stick on there. It came right off with the plug, so I didn't have to worry about it. That's why I got that screwdriver. You can scrape it off. You just want to really make sure that the old one comes off. And so I'm just kind of, can't even see what I'm doing. Again, don't have to worry about burning my hands. I just put it on snug there. And then uh, I torque them. Um, so I'm just going to get a torque wrench and torque that to, uh, I'll probably do between 30 and 33, somewhere in that neighborhood there. And so that's all that needs to be done right there. So I'll be right back. Okay, it's going to be kind of hard to see, one-handed and everything. But I just wanted to show you how little 30 foot-pounds is. There it is. That's all it takes to, whoops, to um, torque that on. It's not very high at all. That's the, one of the main reasons why I don't like having other people doing my oil changes. They always way over torque that and damage things. Anyway, so next we're going to get to the oil filter. Let's see, that's right up here. And that's where our little uh, filter wrench and extension and everything comes in. So that's what I'm going to work on next. Something I want to show you on this is uh, I use the Toyota ones. I'm going to probably eventually, I got, I just buy them in bulk so I get them really cheap. But when I use these up, I'm going to switch to Wix Full Synthetic. Just because uh, I feel it's probably even a better product. Just because uh, people are really going a lot with synthetics. And this is meant for a conventional or synthetic. So theory is the uh, newer ones will be higher tech. Anyways, uh, what I wanted to point out is they come with a rubber seal. And they already put some... Uh, a lubricant some kind of silicon or something on the it's free lube for you if yours is not just put a little clean oil around that um, and then any anyhow so you just want to make you be aware that there is a plastic sheet on this and you want to make sure you do have some kind of lubricant on the old o-ring so this I'm, I can't even see what I'm doing I'm just moving the camera around just that, make sure that fits on there it fits on there good so let me get my Little extension setup. Okay, not rocket science. This is what the setup looks like. I just uh, make sure my wrench is on loose so I don't have to think about it when I hook it all up. Get in there, put that up there, turn it just to just break it free so it can do it by hand, and then I get this thing out of the way. If that, if the lid stays on or the cap stays on there, that's fine. Then I'm gonna get this and. Uh, Start taking this out here, make a mess. Again, benefits of having whoops, 
that's my cap there now it's going to get all muddy to see benefits of having cool oil and so then I'm going to clean my hand and screw the other one in hand tight and just tighten it with my hand so I'll be right back alright so I didn't film that because uh, it's hard to do one handed never see if this thing is recording it's pretty bright out I can't see much so all I did is put it in there tightened it in by hand I just you know it's even nice if your hands a little bit oily because then it won't over tighten it you just tighten it as tight as you can by hand and uh, it'll tighten up on its own when it when it expands and contracts due to the heating and cooling of it so that's pretty much it for the oil change part now all we got to do is go up top oh make sure you pull the oil I'm trying to show that plastic thing I took that off you want to make sure that's not on there so now I'm just going to go up top and uh, put some oil in it. Okay, I got my oil all ready to go. It's already pre-measured out to four quarts. You just want to fill slow so don't overfill it. You want to make sure your funnel's clean. That's what I'm doing right now. Just wiping out with a rag. Get that guy in there. Don't lose your cap. And pour away. Hopefully, this is coming up on camera. I don't even know what you guys are looking at. Let's see. So, I'm just putting four quarts in there. Check your owner's manual too much. You can have a little bit less, but you don't want to have more. More is actually bad on the seals and everything. A lot of people put too much oil at the quick glue places. Sometimes they'll put an extra quart in there, it's hard on your oil seals. There you go, and I like to put my old oil in these containers and then just take them to your auto parts for recycling. Uh, just let it sit a few minutes. Just going to check the oil dipstick, you can get an idea what's going on. Yeah. It's hard when you first do it because it's still kind of running down the tube, but I can already tell it's going to be above the, it's going to be just almost to the top there. So I'll let it sit a little bit and then check it again. But the nice thing is the oil looks almost like the oil I took out. Another trick is if you can't see it on one side, flip it over to the other and you can see it a little bit better on the other side maybe. So with that, I'm sure it's going to be good. You just want to let it drain to the bottom and check it. Don't put this on too tight, but don't have it too loose either. Um, or else it'll come off when you're driving. I've seen that happen before. But I've also seen it where people put it on so tight you can't get the darn thing off. Um, so I'm just going to wait for the oil to settle down a few minutes and then check it. And I'm assuming it's going to come out good. Then I'm going to start the car. Watch your oil pressure if you've got a pressure gauge. And then go under, just look underneath the car make sure you don't have any obvious leaks coming out real bad or anything. And then you're pretty much done. Uh, the rest is just all clean up and get rid of the old oil. So a uh, big tip is uh, get your replacement oil filter and put it in your bag uh, so you're ready to go for the next oil change so you're not hunting around for stuff. And uh, also tape that gasket on your old oil or your new oil filter that you haven't used yet. And if you're not sure uh, what the torque value is, you can maybe write it with a sharpie on the O-ring or something. Anyways, hope this uh, video helps somebody out out there. The thing I like about this, this is almost real time when you go to a professional place. I think it cost me $14 in oil, and the time uh, making this video made it last longer. And uh, you go to an oil place, it seems like they want $90 for an oil change nowadays because you're using full synthetic. And there we used full synthetic, it cost me $14. And I did a good job, and I know I checked everything. A lot of these, you don't know if they're really checking stuff or not. I've seen a lot of people come in to shops with pretty bad problems that quick lube place has done like not put oil in it or over tighten it and strip out bolts all kinds of crazy stuff and not check basic stuff um, oh I should have told you when you're underneath there 
you, another thing you should look at is what you can look up on YouTube what it is. Uh, check your CV joints. I always kind of glance over at them just out of habit, so I, I probably didn't even show that. Um, the boots on them. Just make sure that nothing underneath there while you're working underneath. Just look around and see if anything looks weird. Any tears in any rubber parts or anything. Anyways, hope this video helps you out. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching.